Welcome to the Shared Lutheran Ministry of Fayette County. My name is Pastor Jill Vivro, and I am the interim pastor for the Shared Lutheran Ministry. Our assisting minister today is Lucille Kill. Thank you for generously offering to be here with us. And today is October 23rd, and we are worshiping with you here at St. John Lutheran Church in Ellinger, Texas. For this coming week, we have a lot of things that are going on. Today we lift up Caden, Kovar, Landon, Missy, and Parker Wysoon from Rudersville as they celebrate and affirm their baptism. Um, we're in the middle of Antique Festival, and Warrington is still serving up great meals at their food stand. So go and visit them and the bake stand on Thursdays, Friday, and Saturday. This coming week, SLM will be volunteering at Second Chance. On Wednesday, October 26th, quilting will be at Reutersville at 9 a.m., also on Wednesday, October, October 26th, Confirmation will be meeting at Reutersville at 6 p.m. Saturday, October 29th, the Breakfast Bible Study will be held at the Birkeland Party Barn, 7.30 a.m. Next Sunday is October 30th, and it is Reformation. And it is during that service that we will be recognizing and honoring all of our members who are 80 plus years old. So we encourage those who are able to come to, to come. And also, don't forget to wear red for Reformation. And then on Monday, October 31st, Trick, trick or Treat will be held at Fayetteville at 7 p.m. Today is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Let us begin our worship together with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, our righteous judge, daily your mercy surprises us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. In a time of drought, the people pray for mercy, repenting of their sins and the sins of their ancestors. They appeal to God to remember the covenant, to show forth God's power, and to heal their land by sending life-giving rain. And now the reading. Although our iniquities testify against us, O Lord, for your name's sake, our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its Savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in a land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us. We are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning his people. Truly they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judea? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace but find no good for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idol of the nations bring rain? Or can the heaven give showers? Is it not you, O Lord, our God? We set our hope on you. For it is you who do all this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young by the side of your altar. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your home. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the Balgram Valley will find a place of springs, for the early rain has covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. A reading from Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. The conclusion of this letter to a young minister offers a final perspective on life from one who has faced death. Though others let him down, Paul was sure of his faith in the Lord, who stood by him and lent him strength. And now the reading. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil and attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace are yours from God, our Creator, who calls us beloved and our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, who brings salvation and life to us all. Amen. This parable of the two men in the temple praying creates many emotions for me. As I sit and ponder on Jesus' parable, it reminds me of a young mother who came to me one day a few years back. In my mind, this young working mom, she had it all. She had a beautiful family, and she had so much going for her. And as she poured her heart out to me, this is not what I heard. She found herself lacking as a mother and as a person because she compared herself to all of her friends and their so what somewhat perfect lives. All of those things that they posted on their various so social media sites. She would scroll through all of their posts, all of their perfect pictures that spoke to how great their lives were. And in doing so, she felt she had nothing. It was so sad hearing her distress, because in reality, she did have so much. And for those of us who are on social media, don't we do the same thing? We look at everything that our friends are doing, and somehow we feel inside that there are times when we do not quite measure up. It is this kind of comparison that we discover in our gospel lesson for today. Jesus' parable begins with, Two men went to the temple to pray. At the close of the parable, we find that one man leaves feeling justified. It's a pretty straightforward story, really. One of the two men feels pretty confident in himself and his accomplishments. He is a Pharisee, a leader who is devoted to his life to God and to the temple. But as we hear him pray, we get the sense that his prayer is not one that we should claim for ourselves. He prays, Dear God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. His prayer seems self-righteous, smug, and even arrogant. Whereas the other man, a tax collector, is in the temple praying too. But he stands at a distance from the Pharisee, away from the center where folks would normally gather. And his prayer is very different from the Pharisee's. He prays, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
it is the tax collector with this simple prayer that Jesus says returned home justified. And it appears that the moral of the story is this. Don't be arrogant. Don't be proud like the Pharisee. But be humble like the tax collector. Again, it seems pretty straightforward, but is it? If you consider the Pharisee, he's really not that bad. He actually is quite devoted. He's not a thief, a adulterer, or troublemaker. He is not like the tax collector, someone who worked for the Roman government, collecting taxes from the Jews, taxes that paid for the Romans' occupation of Israel. When the Pharisee continues his prayer, we discover that he is actually righteous. He says, I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of my income. Boy, if we could only do that. But according to the Bible, he fits the definition of righteousness. He lives his life that is in, cor in accord with the law of Israel. The better you are at keeping the law, the more righteous you are. Or in terms of today, the more successful you are, or the better you are. And in reality, that Pharisee is right. He is not like other people, and he has been very devoted to keeping the law and living out his faith. But as Jesus says, he is not justified. On the other hand, we have the tax collector, who is the complete opposite of the Pharisee. He does not keep the law. He has nothing that he can boast about. People look down on him and maybe even fear him. They definitely would not want to revere him or try to emulate him. And this isn't news, new news to the tax collector. He knows he's despised. He knows he's looked down on. That is why he is sitting in the corner away from the people. He won't even turn his eyes heavenward, but he simply asks for mercy. Mercy that he knows he doesn't deserve. It is this one that Jesus claims as being justified. Why has he found, fa found favor and justification? Well, the answer is quite simple. Those who are righteous with all of their accomplishments the act is on them. And while those who are justified, it's not based on what the individual can do, but rather everything is based on what God does. And all of the devotion and all of the accomplishments, the Pharisee is unable to see his need for God's saving love in his life. The tax collector knows that he is not worthy, but he asks for God's mercy. He asks for God to look at him and to judge him not based on what he has done, but instead to look at him and to judge him based on who God is. That is compassionate, loving, and merciful. If you think about it, there's a lot of risk trying to preach on this parable and trying to explain it. If you read it straightforward and say, be humble like the tax collector and not self-righteous like the Pharisee, well, don't you fall into the trap of judgment and you're no better than the Pharisee? I believe the moral of this parable, it's about righteousness. It's not I believe the moral of this parable is that righteousness, success, or being better than anyone else is never going to be enough, and it's not anything to strive for. Why? Because it's based on what we can do. It's based on our abilities and accomplishments. And in the end, as Luther says, we will always fall short. This story 
I think, is also a lesson on comparisons. We are not meant to compare our lives to other people. Because if we do, we will never measure up, nor will we ever be happy. That is the lesson that that young mother failed to see and understand. We spend way too much time trying to compare ourselves to other people, trying to find approval and acceptance, especially now that we have social media resources. But the truth is, what we see on those social media platforms, it's not real. The bottom line is this. When we compare ourselves to others, we will never have enough. We will never be satisfied. After winning Super Bowl forty-five and being named the most valuable player of the game, Aaron Rodgers admitted he felt just strangely empty. Which really does sound crazy to us. He said the accomplishment that he accomplished everything that he hoped for, everything he wanted since he was a child. And all he could think was, is this all there is to life? Success, having it all, it's never enough because no matter what we accomplish, no matter how successful we are, there will always be more, more that we want, more that we could have done, or always someone who has done more than us, which always raises questions and doubts within. The secret to being a person of faith is not to strive to be righteous or humble, rich or poor, successful or a failure. It's not about any of those things that can be measured. Instead, it's about receiving God's love, acceptance, and grace. The secret to a well-lived life in faith, a life of joy and happiness, is simply recognizing that we will always be in need of God's love. No matter what you have done or what you have not done, it is when you recognize that when you recognize your need, that when, that's when you're able to come to God, asking for God's loving presence, asking for God's mercy and grace. And when you do humbly come to God, that is when you discover that God is always there, always has been, calling you loved, holy, and precious. Who is justified? The emperor answer is simple. All who recognize their need and turn to God. It is in turning to God that we discover that it is all about God, not so much about us. It is then that we begin to see that all that God has done in our lives and is doing. In the end, all who loves all whom God loves and accepts and calls. They are righteous, not because of what they've done, but because of who they are, God's precious and beloved children. And there is no better news than this. And for this we say thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is at this time during the service that we offer up our thanks to God. And we would like just to take a moment to thank you, those of you who are watching at home or listening through the radio. We thank you for your continued support that you have given to our ministry of sharing God's word. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. God of mercy, you are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. We especially give thanks as you call Caden, Landon, and Parker as they affirm their baptisms today. Inspire them and your church to serve and love all people with the unceasing grace you extend to us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all creation, you formed a world where even the sparrow finds a home. Preserve the beauty and diversity of all creatures with whom we share the earth. Lead us to protect all living things. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, you are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Rescue families and nations torn apart by violence and warfare, especially the Ukraine and Russia. Unite all people toward common goals of reconciliation and peace for every person. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anger, anxiety or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Joyce, Wendy, Kim, Jean, Birdine, Gerald. Joyce, Orville, Billy, Debbie, Sheila, Russell, Sherry, Jennifer, Rhonda, Marilyn, Marshall, Willie, Lillian, Leroy, Pat, Lorelai, Linda, Larry, and Janelda. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of restoration, you call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make our congregation a community of humility and repentance, ready to encounter you in love and follow in your ways. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The congregation may offer prayers aloud or silently at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our call committee, for their work and our discernment in this process. Let your spirit guide us and them to seek and find our next pastor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of eternal life, to you be the glory forever. We give thanks for all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and now lives with you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join our voices with all the faithful, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now, God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.